Oh, Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. We thank you, Jesus. Um, let's check the book of John, chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. And I will give for the life of the world. Now, you know, Jesus has been feeding the people with bread, the canal bread, the one baked in bakery, the bread and the fish from the sea. He has fed them for so long that uh, they almost took Jesus for, <laughs> for a baker. Got to a point when God needed to appoint people. You see, anytime God wants to begin to make appointments the first thing god does is that he will raise his standard now the reason for which god will raise his standard is so that carnal people will not feature in what god wants to do because if a carnal man handles the things of god he will corrupt it so if god those you know when god wants to start appointing people when god wants to start his appointment he will raise the standard such that only those people who are genuinely seeking God will be able to meet up with the standard of God. So this season actually defines the season that it has pleased the Lord to appoint people. And the, the, the standard for which God appoints people is by raising his, you know, his standards. So Jesus looked at the people that has you know, always been eating the normal bread and the fish from the sea. And he said, now... The time to eat the normal bread baked from factory has ended. The bread to eat now is my flesh. And the wine to drink now is my blood. And those that were there, they said, what? They have been used to the normal bread. Okay, let's continue. Let's read John chapter 6, verse 54. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Now, Jesus after introducing the, the realities of eating his, his, his body as the bread and drinking his blood as the wine, he now gave them the benefit they stand to enjoy from eating and drinking those two things. He said, just in case you, by, you, you are able to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, eternal life will be given to you. Now, it will now mean that eternal life is sponsored by Jesus. So a man that has eternal life is one that has eaten the body of Christ and has you know, drank the blood of Jesus. So you have to eat his flesh and you have to drink his blood to have his life. Can you see that? You eat his flesh, you drink his blood to have his life which is eternal life and um, the last verse i want us to consider is still john chapter 6 um verse 55 it says for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is wine indeed what is jesus saying here jesus is now telling them that his flesh is the true meat which means that for there to be, anytime you hear true meat, it will mean that there, there are other meats that are not true. If there is original, there is fake. So Jesus told them, my flesh is the true meat. Meaning that all other meats you must have tasted before, though they may be meat, but they are not true. So just in case you desire for something that is true, then my flesh is the true meat. Just in case you desire to drink a wine that is true. There are many wines that are available. Many diluted wines, uh, acidic wines, poisonous wines. But just in case you begin to pant for the true wine, my blood <laughs> is wine indeed. Okay, let's take one more, one more verse. This verse is getting interesting. Uh, John 6 verse 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. Praise God. Now, one thing you must understand is this. You cannot dwell in God directly. There is a protocol for dwelling in God. The, the, you see, we can't 
When we say, I am in God, what you are saying does not have a literal meaning. So when you say, I am in God, what you are really saying is, I am in Christ. So Jesus gave us the formation here. He said, just in case you have by grace eaten my flesh and you have drank my blood, then you will be in me as I am in Christ. So the way to dwell in God is to come into Christ. Why? Because when you come into Christ, you are already in God because Christ is in God. That's the formation. So you can't stay in, Christ, in God directly except you come into Christ. So it is your coming into Christ that defines your coming into God. The scripture says, no one cometh to the Father except through me. Meaning, no one can have access to dwell in the Father except he first dwell in the Son. So it is your dwelling in the Son that translates to your dwelling in the Father. So my actual focus for this short teaching is God's appointment. You must understand that anytime God wants to appoint his people, the first thing he does is to raise his standard. Because if God does not raise his standard, carnal people will have access. They'll be qualified. And once they are qualified for the things of the Spirit, they'll begin to corrupt it. So, the Bible says, freely have you received, freely should you give. When you, when you meet with a carnal person, they know they are, a carnal person knows that he has, re, he has received freely, but to give freely will be hard. That's a carnal person. Carnal people corrupt spiritual things. That's the formality. Car, carnal people corrupt spiritual things. So, the way God preserves spiritual heritage is to raise the standard so that only those who are seeking God in spirit and in truth will find Him. The carnal ones will not find Him because the standard of God will be too high for them to flow with. So you, you will hear them say things like, no, 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 this is old school. This is, this is out of fashion. This, is, this cannot be the Bible. God is not so hard. They are carnal people. And because of this, they are carnal, they will not meet up with the standard of God. And this is the consequence. Just in case you fall short of the standard of God, it means you have missed the appointment of God. Because the appointment of God comes to only those that meet up with the standard of God. So your ability to meet up with God's standard is what qualifies you to be one of the appointed. And until you are appointed by God, you cannot minister God to your generation. You can minister flesh, but not God. So, but it is your appointment by God that energizes you with enough spiritual resources to carry God and deposit God in your generation. I pray that the Lord will give us grace to be able to meet up with God's divine appointments in the name of Jesus. This is the wisdom of God. Don't sell it.